All right, so we're going to move on to the last symbol, which is caching. And let's actually take a look at the sample. The sample is not going to show very much, but well, as we dig in, you'll see what's happening. Basically, what we're doing is that we're using a value style to draw the capitals based on a population rank that's in the data. So the population rank is 1, 2, or 3, and the data includes all the world capitals, what their population rank is. And based on that rank, we're drawing either a large, uh, medium, or a small uh, symbol to represent that. Now, what you don't see going on behind the scenes is that typically the way that this would happen is you would specify the column name for the particular column that you want that includes the population rank. And then what would happen is every time the style goes to draw, it would request that column. That column would be grabbed from the DBF if it was in a, uh, a shape file or be grabbed from SQL Server or, or wherever. And that has some overhead to it. So what we've done with this uh, cache value style is that we allow the user, you, to pre-populate all of the known values so that when it gets down to drawing, we just uh, quickly cross-reference a dictionary to see what the value should be. This also really comes in handy if the data that you're looking for, in our case, the population rank, what if this data was actually maintained outside of the shape file in a SQL server or some other data source that has a relatively high overhead to go and fetch every time that we want to draw. In that case, what we can do is we can query that, that SQL server or whatever that data source is first, load these values, and then it's going to be really fast every time that you go to draw. So let's take a look at how we set this up in the sample. It's right down here. And this one's a little bit longer, but we're doing we're doing some caching, so you have to bear with me. We grab the world capital layers again. Um, we we set up the new cache value style. We say what the column name is that we want to deal with. In this case it's uh, population rank. This next part is where we actually build the cache. Now, normally this might come from SQL or some other place, but in our case what we're going to do is we're just going to open the shape file, get, the, uh, get that data out, and then cache it. So here we're opening the world capital layer. We're going to get all features, and we're going to return population rank. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of these, and for each one, we're going to add to our values cache, and that's the cache value styles dot value cache, and we add the ID of the feature, and then we add the value of the population rank, and then we're going to go ahead and close this. So we only need to do this one time. Then what we're going to do is just like every other value style, we're going to add the value items, and here we're going to add one to represent. Um, the population rank 1, and we're going to give it the point style of capital 1. We're going to do the same thing for population rank 2 and 3. And then, just like we did with all the other samples, we're going to clear the custom styles, and we're going to add this one in. And what's going to happen is, is that when we go to draw, it's going to, well, actually, when we click this button, it's going to load all of this data up, and then what we're going to see is that every time the style goes to draw, it's not actually going to request the population rank anymore, and it's going to use its own cache. Now, in this particular style that we implemented, if we didn't build the cache up, and it saw that the cached value style dot uh, values cache was empty, then what it does is it kind of falls back and then always requests in the get required column names core that population rank so it can still do its job so it's just kind of a little fallback so let's take a look at the code for that okay so in this particular one we have the column name that we care about this is the column name of the cache data we have a, a dictionary of the value items and that dictionary is string and value item because we have to kind of mimic the same functionality as the value style that we have and we also have the values cache, which is a dictionary of string string, where the first string is going to be the feature ID, and the second string is going to be the value. 
We have a couple constructors here just to make things handy. And then we have our, our public properties for the value items and the value cache. So let's take a look here in the draw core. Again, we're going to loop through all of our features. We're going to set the field value uh, to an empty string. And then we're going to start checking things. So if the values cache is equal, uh, the count is equal to zero, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and, um, and we want to go ahead and pull the field value from the feature itself. So that was that fallback that I talked with you about. And we're going to see the other part of the fallback when we get to the get required column names core. If there are things in the cache, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a try get value. And we're going to try to get the ID, the feature ID, and the field value. And if we can't find it, then we're actually going to just put an empty string in there, just in case that, that value doesn't happen to exist. OK, so now that we've gotten that value, the rest of this code is pretty much all the same code that we'd have in a regular value style. We want to look at the value items and see if it contains a key for the field value. Go ahead and grab that. If there actually is a value that matches, then what we're going to do is uh, create an array of features. We're going to check to see if the custom styles count uh, is zero. If so, we're going to actually call the draw for our default area, default line, default point, default text. If it's not a zero, that means we have custom styles, then we don't call these draw, uh, these default drawing, and we just simply loop through the uh, custom styles and call the style.draw. So this is another case again where we're not actually doing our own drawing, we're just proxying it off uh, to, to another style to actually uh, do the drawing. Now here's the other part of that fallback mechanism which is the get required column names core. And here what we're doing is is that we check the values cache and if values cache is, uh, is zero then we add the required uh, field name uh, column name. So in our case it was that population rank we'll add it so now we'll try to get it from the from the DBF or from wherever if you haven't already populated it. Uh, the next thing we have to do, and actually for its kind of cookie cutter code from here on out, is that we have to loop through all the value items and make sure that none of their, I mean, make sure that we get the required uh, field names from any of their values. And here we've got to get them from uh, the default text style because on each value item there's a there's a default text, a default point, a default area, a default line. So here we've got to grab it from the default text style. Here we've got to grab it from the default point style, from the default line style, from the default area style. And that's basically it. And in this particular case we didn't override the draw samples core because I don't even know what we could what we could show uh, for that. And maybe an improvement that we'll make in the future is maybe instead of you just drawing, you know, one particular style, maybe what we'll have is is some sort of array you can pass back so you can pass back all the possible variations. But even in that case, there's a possibility where you could have a, a near infinite number of, of variations. So I don't know if that's going to work exactly. So let's actually go ahead and, and run this and put a breakpoint in. And let's take a look at these get required column names core. So we'll go ahead and put a breakpoint in there. And just to show that when you, when you actually uh, load the cache, it's not going to request that, that column. OK, so here we are. See, and since we had, had actually already loaded that, it's, it's not, it's not going to request the population rank at all. So let's go ahead and, and run that. Now let's make a slight change and let's not pre-populate that. So we'll go in here and we'll just comment out building the cache. So we're not going to build the cache this time. And 
as you can see, we're actually going to go in here and we're going to request it. And if we go ahead and run it, you'll see that the application runs uh, just as well. It's just going to be faster if we've actually pre-populated the cache. And, you know, we've had customers that use this where you have, you know, literally thousands of features. The data is, is hard to get to or it's expensive to get to or they just need every little drop of performance out of it. So those are an example of a couple different styles and what I want to do is in a future um, in a future video is focus uh, have one where we focus more specifically on how you do the drawing with the geo canvas and actually we can touch a little bit on that now because in all of these different samples we don't actually do any drawing ourselves we're always kind of subbing it out but this is what that would look like inside of the draw core instead of calling like in this example a point style draw what we would do is we would access this canvas which was passed in to us and there's a number of, of different methods that we can use um, like a draw area a draw ellipse draw a line um, draw text you can draw a world image, you can draw a world image without scaling, um, a whole bunch of different native image stuff. But one of the key things is that it always draws in, in the world coordinates. So in this particular case, if, if we wanted to just change this around a little bit, just to be kind of creative, we could say uh, draw an ellipse and we need to set the feature the center point of the feature so that's going to be easy we type in feature and then we have the width and the height and what we're going to do is we're going to make the width and the height the symbol size and then we need a geo brush which is the fill brush and we're going to go ahead and grab that from the point style Let's see, where is that guy at? There we go, symbol solid brush. And the drawing level, we'll keep it at drawing level number one. All right, so basically we don't really need to do this point style drawing anymore. We can actually just use the canvas to draw the ellipse straight away. So let's go ahead and try this out. Yep, but see, we got the same effect. And what we could do is just to kind of prove this is this is working, we could make um, one a little bit bigger, like plus two. And then we should get some kind of uh, more of an ellipse and not not a perfect circle. Yeah, and you can see that the width is a little bit larger. But let's actually blow it out of proportion a lot more. And we can see it a little more easily. Yep, so you can definitely see now that they're stretching on the width side of it. But you can use this geo canvas to draw, you know, all kinds of different things. And there's other overloads that allows you to pass in that allow you to pass in uh, outline pens, uh, fill brushes, all kinds of different stuff. And you can play around with that. So that's more if you want to create your own style just from absolute scratch and not reuse, you know, any of the styles that we have already. So that does it for the coding section. Let's head back to the PowerPoint and wrap this up. Thank you for taking the time for watching this video. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I did putting it together.